Hello, today I'll be going over problem one of the May Code Chef Cook-Off Contest. And problem number one, chef and recipe. So in this problem, you are given a recipe of n numbers. So in this recipe, what these numbers mean is that each number is a spice coming from that jar. So here we have two ones. What this means is this is a spice coming from jar number one, and this is a spice coming from jar number one. So we have two spices coming from jar number one. This two means that we have one spice coming from jar number two. And the spices in these labeled jars are different from each other. So the spices in jar number one is different than the spice in jar number two. And the spices in number fours, we have three spices coming from jar number four. So now what we want to do is determine if this is chef's recipe. Now in order to determine that, there are two constraints you have to watch out for. The first constraint is, say we have a recipe. We can see in this recipe, we have a spice from jar 1, spice from jar 1, two spices from jar 1. Then we move on here to a spice from jar 2. And then we come back here to two more spices from jar 1. This is not one of chef's recipes because of the fact that we have two ones here. There is a separator, a two. And in order for this to be chef's recipe, we must have all of the spices from jar one group together, all of the spices from jar two group together, and all the way up to all of the spices from jar A of I group together. Second constraint is if we have something like, in this case, we have three spices labeled from jar number one and three spices labeled from jar number two. The reason why this does not work to be chef's recipe is because we have three spices from each jar. In this case, chef will only create a recipe where the number of spices per jar is different. So the number of spices coming from jar number one has to be different than the number of spices from jar two, which is different than the number of spices in jar three, all the way up to A, to a of I. So now let's go over how we can solve for the two cases. So case one is that spices are not grouped together. An example of this case would be 1, 1, 2, 1, 1. Now, in order to solve for this case, what we want to do is we want to go through the array. We want to check the next spice, which would be this 2, and we see it's different than 1. So that means that this entire string of 1s, or this entire set of 1s, has to be done with. So therefore, there can be no other 1s in the sequence. Otherwise, it would not be chef's recipe. However, we come across another set of two 1s here. So how do we eliminate this? How do we do it such that if we've already visited the number one, we don't visit it again later on in the array if it's not connected? Well, the solution is in, is in the name itself, a visited array. You can create a Boolean, bool visited, all set to false. Now with this visited array, we can loop through our recipe. So in this recipe, we go through the first one. We find a 1, we can mark 1 as visited, and then we go through and find all the other ones. Then we go to a 2, we see that 2 is not visited, so therefore we just mark it as a 2 and go through all of the remaining 2s in that sequence position. Then we go come across here again, we see a 1, however 1 has already been visited from over here when we came across it the first time, therefore we know that it is not chef's recipe. Second case. K spices are found from two or more different jars, meaning that, for example, jar one had three spices and jar two also had three spices. So in this case, we can actually use the same method for case one. So for example, if we have one, 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 two, two, two. While going through the array, as we did in case number one, we can mark them as visited, but we can also count them. We see that there are three spices coming from jar number one. So we can actually create another bool. And this would be a, these would all be Boolean arrays. We move on to our array and we count these up. We get three. So now what we can do is that in the first set over here, we get our number three. So we set counted at position three equal to true, meaning that no other sequence of spices can have three spices from a different jar. But then over here, when we come across this other three, we again come across counted three, we're going to set again to true. However, it has already been set to true 
from the previous case. So since it's already true, we know that this is a repeat. So therefore, we know that it will no longer be chef's recipe. So now let's go over how we can code the solution. So we're going to start out by inputting t, the number of test cases, and for each t, we're going to have our integer n, which is the number of spices in the recipe, and then we're going to input into an array of n. From here, we can start initializing our two Boolean arrays. So we're going to have a boo visited of size 1002. Keep in mind our size is 1002 because there can be at max 10 to the power 3 as stated in the constraints for the problem. And we're going to have our other Boolean array of counted. Then we're going to initialize them by setting everything to 0. Once this has been done, we can start iterating through the array of n. Now one thing which we want to keep mind of is the first element. So before we start, we're going to create an integer counter for the size of the sequence of that specific spice from the jar as stated in our solution. And we are going to set the first element as visited and set counter equal to 1. Now the first thing we want to check is if the element we're at is not used, meaning it is starting a new sequence of the spices of that jar type. So we write if it is not visited. If it is not visited, then we want to visit it and check all of the elements after it to see if they are the same and count up how many elements of it is the same. So here I've created two variables, temp and counter. So counter is the size of all of the spices coming from one type of jar, as we mentioned in our solution. What this temp is, is basically just a variable storing the jar number for one spice. So that way, as we go through the array, we can compare each element to that spice jar number to see if it is the same. And if it is, we'll increase counter. If not, then we know that a new spice is coming. So this temp is just a temporary variable used to compare. So now one thing is if it is not visited, we're immediately going to mark it as visited, set counter equal to 1. And then we're going to copy that element into our temp slot. Now what we want to do afterwards is we know that that element is now visited. So we want to write another statement. If it is vi visited and the array at position i is equal to temp, or basically the next element in the array is equivalent to the jar spice number we are comparing it to. Then we want to add counter because then we know that the next spice number is the same as the one we're comparing it to. If so, we want to increase counter. Now the last case is if it is if it is visited, but RDI is not equal to counter, then that means that it's been visited before and it's not part of the same sequence, meaning that it does not satisfy case number one, where the spices are not grouped together. Therefore, we can write an else statement and then we can just print out no and break. Now, one thing we need to keep in mind of is case number two, where case spices are found from two or more different jars. So in this case, we have to write this case in the first if statement because what this tells us is if we come across a new element, if we come across a new element, we want to check the old elements counter and then we want to store that value or check if it's that value has already been taken by a different jar number. So in here, we can write if counted at position counter is true, then that means that we want to print out no and we want to break. And then at the end, if it's not, then we'll just put the value of counter into the boolean counted array. And then if it's not, we just want to mark the position at counter as visited in that array. 
Now, one thing we need to keep in mind of is that the last element. So if we're at the last element, we have counter equal to some number, but there's no new element after the last one. So how do we check if counter is already used? Therefore, we can copy and paste this part at the end of our for loop to check over the last element. However, now we need to keep track of if we print in no inside of one of these loops, we don't want to print out no again, or we don't know when to print out yes. So we can create a Boolean to see if we've already printed out an answer. Instead of directly printing out no, we'll just set printed equal to false. Now at the end we can check if we need to print it, then we'll just print out yes. If not, we'll print out no. Submitting this code does give us a correct answer.